Hello everybody, I am Nico D, so today I am back with a new SBC, so this is it, the Banana Pi M5, so this comes with the Amlogic S905 X3, so this is the same as the Oldroid C4 and the Oldroid HC4, so I have gotten this board from Armbian to review it, I am not paid by Armbian, I am also not paid by Cinevoip, the maker of this board. So these days it is very hard to obtain Raspberry Pis, so certainly Raspberry Pi 4s, so this can be a good competitor for it, it is as powerful with the CPU, it also has got 4GB of RAM and it also has got a 16GB eMMC, something a Raspberry Pi doesn't have. It is missing CSI or DSI for camera or extra display. And it also doesn't have got Wi-Fi on board or Bluetooth. So that is the same as the Oldroid C4. But it is a very potent board. So Armbian and Cinevoip are teaming up to do a giveaway for this board. So the Banana Pi M5 but also a Banana Pi M2 Pro. So the M2 Pro also has got the same sock but only has got 2GB of RAM. But it does have got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So that's the difference with this and the M2 Pro. For the giveaway the link is here in the description. So uh, check it out. You, uh, if you are not an Armbian member yet you will have to register and wait for 24 hours to get a ticket. But if you are already an Armbian member you can directly get a ticket to win this board. So enough talking. Let's go to the specs. Here we go! So as I already told you this comes with the Amlogic S905 X3. This has got 4 times Cortex A55 at 1.9 GHz default. In Armbin it is lightly overclocked to 2.1 GHz. So this has got 12 nanometer lithography and 1 MB cache. The GPU is an ARM Mali G31 MP2 at 850 MHz. This has got 4GB LPDDR4 RAM, it has got a micro SD slot, 16GB eMMC, 4x USB 3, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI 2.1 up to 4K 60fps, 3.5mm audio jack, it has got infrared, it has got 40 pin GPIO and it is powered by USB Type-C at only 5 volts, so no PD. So to download an image for the Banana Pi M5 we of course go to the Armbian download page. There we have got Banana Pi M5 slash M2 Plus. So the images for the M2 Plus are the same as for the Banana Pi M5. So here we've got Armbian Bullseye and Bullseye Cinnamon. And if we go down then we see we've got a lot of desktops. So the Cinnamon desktop, Gnome desktop, Minimal desktop, XFCE desktop. And then we have got Jammy and again all the same desktops. So for this video I am going to use Bullseye XFCE. And it is important to say that this board is supported so you can get Armbian support for this board. I am using this for uh, Wi-Fi, so this is 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So to boot I can just press this button and it will boot into our Debian image. One small issue I found is when you reboot with an SD card in it with an image on and you also have got an eMMC with an image on, it will always boot from the eMMC. So with a cold boot it will boot from SD, with a hot reboot it will boot from the eMMC. So while this is booting I can tell you that Armbian from now only ships images with frozen firmware. So the kernel and uboot packages will not be upgraded by default. So you can unfreeze them in Armbian config or using apt mark unhold. I've already set up my desktop the way I like it. So let's open GNOME Disk Utility. So here you see we've got our 16GB eMMC. There is an image installed on it but we will later on install this bullseye image onto it. 
as you see I've got my SD card of 128GB here where Bullseye is installed on. Now first to show the Panfrost drivers, so the times are over that there were no GPU drivers for single board computers in mainline, so now we have got Panfrost and here with Bullseye it works very good, so Super Tux card runs great on it, even in 1080p full screen. The version of Super Tux card in Jammy isn't working well, so that's why I chose Bullseye to show. But in Jammy, Firefox does perform a little bit better with YouTube playback. So with Jammy you can do 1080p with a little bit dropped frames, while with Bullseye even 720p has got a lot of dropped frames. So the one big thing missing as with most ARM SBCs is the VPU drivers. Now to install this image onto our eMMC we type in sudo armbian config and there we go to system. Here you see the defreeze what I talked about earlier if you want to defreeze your kernel and your uboot. And to install we choose install and the first option boot from eMMC system on eMMC. Select that, a few times click ok. And then it will copy everything onto our eMMC, after that it will ask to shut down the system, then just take out the SD cards and boot it from the eMMC. And now some benchmarks, so here are the 7-zip results, so the Banana Pi M5 with Jammy XFC 4 does 1923 MIPS single core, so compared to the Raspberry Pi 400 which is clocked to 1.8 GHz which does 1882. The Raksha 0 also clocked to 1.8 GHz, does 1634. And the Station P1 with RK3399 does 1248 on the small cores and 1843 on the big cores. So the single core performance is already very good. And then the multi-core performance is also very good, so 7278 with Jami. I've also done it with Bullseye, Bullseye performs a little bit better. And I've also done it headless, I don't see no difference versus headless versus with a desktop. So as you see, it can compete with the Raspberry Pi 400 and even with the RK3399 with all core 7-zip decompression. And here the Nico D Blender benchmark results. So the Banana Pi M5 does it in 16 minutes 37 seconds. The Raspberry Pi 400 does it in 13 minutes and 15 seconds. The Station P1 with RK3399 does this in 10 minutes and 10 seconds. The Kados Vim 4 does it in 5 minutes and 3 seconds. And the Rock 5 does it in 3 minutes and 19 seconds. So compared to the newer octa-core boards it isn't a match, but that is not expected of course. Then the temperatures and power consumption, so even without the heatsink it performed pretty well, so it went up to 80 degrees celsius but not over it and it didn't throttle, so that is pretty good. The idle temperature is 52 degrees celsius with a display and no heatsink. With a heatsink it is 47 degrees celsius and maxed out it went up to 76 degrees celsius with a heatsink. Then headless without a heatsink it was 37 degrees celsius in idle and headless maxed out it went up to 70 degrees celsius. So it makes a big difference if you use a display or not. Then the power consumption is 0.2 amps with no HDMI, no Wi-Fi, no USB. And maxed out it went to 0.63 amps. And then as last the transfer rates. So the onboard SD reader isn't very good. So it gets 23.9 megabytes reads and 16 megabytes write. This is with my SanDisk Xtreme 128 gigabytes. So the eMMC read is 174 megabytes a second. And the eMMC write is 32.6 megabytes a second. The USB 3 reads is 375.4 megabytes a second and the USB 3 write is 342.4 megabytes a second. 
so the USB 3 is performing good, the eMMC is ok, but SD reader is very slow. So that's it for today. So the Banana Pi M5 is a nice board, it is great for light server tasks. I wouldn't recommend it for desktop tasks, it can be used for it, but it isn't very powerful. And since it is missing the VPU drivers, it will not be great for video playback. Don't forget to enter for the giveaway. So the link here in the description. I don't have anything to do with this giveaway, so don't ask me anything about it. And I also cannot put your name above on the list. So I hope you all like this video. Thank you all for watching. See you all later. Bye.